Alright fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy crazy video. Now in today's video, the title of this, I don't know how to say her name, so definitely forgive me on this title, okay? Because I know I'm a I'm a flunk this like crazy. But you know you know me, you know my park, socialist regimes, uh life in North Korea and how Americans take freedom for granted. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into this because this is a person that is north uh, from North Korea, and she's going to tell us how we take our freedom for granted because I feel like a lot of people, they just, they don't know the, 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 just the luxury that we're living in America, okay? Because not every country is going to be the best country, but bro, we need to start being grateful for what we do have over here because I'm not going to lie. Going to another country is not the move, okay? It's not the move. Anyways, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Without further ado, let's get it. let go. Hi, I'm Alana. Also, before the video starts, I do want to say this. I am going to link the full video in the link description box below. I'm not going to watch this entire, entire video because it is pretty long, but it will be in the uh, link description box below if you want to go check it out for yourself. But if I do, let it go. Hi, I'm Alana. Um, so since you've been in America, what is one thing that you think America or Americans take for granted that you love? Oh, uh, it's choice. Choice. I don't think Americans understand what a unique thing to have a choice. Choice to where you live, what you do, who you marry, why you even eat. When you go to restaurants, you have at least dozens of them to choose from. In North Korea, we don't have a cookbook because nobody can afford the ingredients to make different kinds of food. So I think that's what I see that Americans don't understand how unique the way of life is here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Alejandra. I'm from Venezuela, and I experienced not the same uh, scenario, but obviously uh, the dictator over there is a friend of Kim Jong Un. And I was, I just have a question because um, the way I see the generation now is that they're so indoctrinated that there's pretty much no way to revert that damage that the left have caused. And do you think any possibility that we can change that in the near future, maybe? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I definitely see that it's, I think, you know, like people from Venezuela, like Cuba or Iran and North Korea, none of them want to live under socialism. <laughs> That's why we escaped, and all these people living in democracy, they want to live, bring the socialism to this country. And the reason why I think they think that way is because of the American education system became a huge propaganda tool. It became an indoctrination camp, like North Korean schoolrooms. And I think once we realize what is getting into our children's minds, and also we realized how American media became liars and they became a propaganda tool as well. Once we see that and this hijacking of these big institutions, then I think we can change that. But first is definitely education that our children getting brainwashed and my son is too. I, I worry about that every day and people really don't understand how bad it got in, in this country right now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Omar. Well, I think your story is massively inspirational. Something that was just going in my mind when you were talking was in transition from North Korea into American culture, you know, experiencing that culture shock. Did you have like a singular moment where it just hit you that like, okay, things are different now? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, every second <laughs> things are different. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, in my dreams, I am still a lot of times a captive. I am still in North Korea, but when I wake up, it's not. So, uh, yeah, I think it's not like one single thing. Like even when I wake up in a nice mattress, like I've never seen a mattress in my life in North Korea. When I get into a warm shower, I've never had a shower in my life, you know, when I have a refrigerator, like everything is literally a miracle. Thank you. Bro. That shows how much we honestly take this junk for granted, bro. We take life for granted, okay? Like, we know 
I feel like we know there are countries out there that don't have the the luxury that we have in America, but it's so many young people that's my age, okay? Because if you don't know, if you are new to the channel, I'm 21, okay? And I talk to a lot of people that's my age, obviously, and these folks be like, man, I moved to another country, woo, woo, woo. Now, in my head, I'm like, bro, do you not understand that, like, the luxury that you have in America, bro, you're not going to get that same luxury in another country. You know what I'm saying? Like, granted, there are some decent countries out there. You know what I'm saying? But this right here is the best of the best. You feel me? This is best as it gets for real. If you've been real, in my opinion, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. But, I mean, we should love America. She said she never even seen a mattress, bro. And we take them small things for granted, like, oh, you know, because it's normal. Especially if you are a born American, you definitely probably seen a mattress once in your lifetime. Even if you was born homeless or even if you were homeless, you have seen a mattress. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But I, I truly believe if you was born in America, you seen the refrigerator. You know you know what a refrigerator is. You know what a freezer is. You know what a mattress is. Like, you seen these things, bro. It's just crazy how much, and this is a shock to me too, because it's crazy how much I take the little things for granted in America. Like I take these small things for granted because I was raised in America. I, I'm a born American. I'm a black American. So for me to even, for me to even take some of the stuff that I have for granted and then to hear her speak on the stuff that was a shock to her, it's like, dang, bro, like, I really need to count my blessings for real, bro. Like, we all need to count our blessings. This is crazy. This is truly crazy. I'm a, wow. Thank you. Hi, my name is Danny. Uh, you talked a lot about human rights activism. What's a good way for a college student to get involved with that? What's a good first step? Yes, uh, first step is do not join the United Nations. <laughs> I mean, they are the biggest, most useless organization I've ever seen in my lifetime. I'm sorry, but I have spoke at UN multiple times and complete degenerates, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just, I mean, they let North Korea, China, Saudi Arabia, they let them decide who are the human rights violators. It's a joke, right? It's a show. So when you want to become a human rights activist, I think it's really important to find your own path and not following this mainstream. And I mean, BLM people say they are like fighting for human rights too, right? So it's not at this point embarrassing to even say that because human rights got hijacked by so many social justice warriors. <laughs> They're like, what are you actually fighting for? <laughs> so yeah, I think don't look for big institutions and it can it needs a lot of innovation so like think about it as a you know business we need to innovate this NGO spaces as well thank you thank you <laughs> hello I'm Luke I'm just wondering what your favorite fast food burger is here hamburger <laughs> okay. even though Kim Jong Il said he uh, discovered the hamburger <laughs> did you see that yeah but he discovered everything but I think it's it's pretty awesome food I love it <laughs> thank you yeah thank you hello my name is Wilson I have a question as a North Korean defector what is life like in South Korea and what type of support do you get from their government yeah, uh, South Korea was very tough. Mm -hmm. uh, I got heavily, heavily discriminated. And a lot of North Koreans cannot even get a job as a waitress in South Korea because of their accent. You know, we have a Northern accent, they can tell. So it's very hard for North Korean to adjust in South Korea and then America. So I'm very lucky that I came to America and you know, stop being South Korean, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Rachel. Um, I was actually going to ask almost the exact same question because I'm studying abroad in South Korea um, next semester. But I was just wondering, I've also read your book and you said you experienced discrimination there. But I was wondering, is there like a still a big population of North Korean people who stay in South Korea? Or do you think the majority of them defect? But I know, as you said, 
it's a very small amount who actually make it to America. So if not America, are they just staying in South Korea or going elsewhere? Oh, mostly they are in China captured. Okay. So majority of North Koreans are in China and they, they end up in four places as a North Korean defector in China. One is you end up in organ harvesting. So they buy you and take your organs out and discard you. Uh, second is you are bought in these brothels. Uh, they rape you until you die. Usually you die in six months. And then third place is where a town of men buy a girl, ship in and buy a girl, and then they rotate and rape her and she dies out. And last place is uh, sex chat rooms where they lock these girls indoor and they make them to perform sex acts in front of the camera. And then for that, these girls get fed and get in a hidden place. So this is happening and this is a thing I am here because there are, as I said, 300,000 of them are trapped in China mm -hmm. and don't know if there's any life for them. And I've been trying to spread this message in America in the land of the free. And one of the producers last year in Hollywood wanted to make a movie out of my story from my first book. And he sent me a movie script and he says, China was my promised land. When I got to China, they gave me protection and refugee. I asked him, like, what the heck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right? And he said, this is the only way we can make a movie about North Korea in Korean Hollywood, by lying about China. And that's why no Michelle Obama or Joe Amar Clooney or none of these people would sit down with me, talk to me, because they all making money out of China. Mm. Wow. And that's why North Korean stories are buried deep down and nobody ever talk about this modern day genocide and holocaust anywhere. Wow. So for me specifically, or just for anyone who is passionate about this as well, because I'm personally very interested in like Korean culture, I spoke to you earlier, um, but also in refugee policy specifically, what would your advice be to me or anyone who's passionate about helping um, North Korean, especially defectors, what do you think that I could do, honestly, moving forward? So there are two ways you can get involved. One is actual action, and is there's a lot of missionaries are still rescuing North Koreans from China to freedom. So you can join one of those mission groups, and in any way you can help. And second is, I guess we have to elect right leaders in America mm -hmm. that understands the threat of China, understand the corruption in American mainstream institutions, and they can, they are willing to be the voice for the voiceless people. Mm -hmm. So I think that's two ways we can do as Americans. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. Uh, Raul, if y'all want to see the full entire um, interview, Go ahead, it's in the link description box below. This right here, it really put a lot of things in perspective for me, especially at a young age, because it's under. I'm trying to understand. Uh, well, I'm not trying to understand, but I, I have came to an understanding thing that with other countries, what they go through is is it's like, bro, it's nothing compared to what we're facing over here. You know, what I'm saying nothing. What she just said about China. I didn't even know that, okay? And that's terrifying, bro. That is truly terrifying. It just shows that we need to be more grateful for the the things that we do have in America, okay? Like, seriously, because other people from other countries are enjoying our freedom more than the people that was born here is enjoying their freedom. You know what I'm saying? We, we got people saying, oh, this ain't really the land of the free. This ain't this, this ain't this. Bro. We have so much freedom over here, bro. If we was to go to other places, like she said, the, the best thing that when she came over here, the best thing that she loved that she feel like we take for granted is choice. We have a choice. They didn't have a choice over there, but we have a choice. We have a choice to do. We have a choice to wake up and see what we want to do, bro. It's another, it's actually a YouTuber that, um, that I don't watch him for real, but I like kind of, you know, kind of slide in a video here and there but he lives i forgot where he lives uh, he lives so he doesn't live in america 
he lives out the country or whatever. But he graduated high school recently in 2024, and he don't have a choice to go to the military. He has to go to the military because I think his country is like almost going to war or something like that. So he has to go to the military. Like he has no choice to back out to nothing. No, he ha he has to go. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be drafted. Regardless of how much you want to run, he's going to be drafted. That, it, like, And then we don't have that out here in America. So it's like, bro, we need to start taking these things. Like, We need to start just looking at the things that we have and like appreciating these things. You know what I'm saying? We take a lot of stuff for granted. Like, We, we truly need to start looking at these things and appreciating what we do have out here in America. It's not going to be the top tier, best, best country in the, like, like, you know, there's no country that's perfect, 100% perfect. We are all imperfect human beings, and even the presidents that we vote for our country, they're imperfect human beings. So, therefore, yeah, Trump want to make America great again, but it will never be 100% great again. But it will be better than what it's been for the last few years, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, hit the like button, subscribe, it's been your boy Depend. I love each and every one of y'all, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video in the comment section below. God bless, stay blessed, peace.